Alright, hello everyone, it's the homie, I'm finally back. Well, first of all, I want to thank you guys for 200 subscribers. I never thought I would even reach this point, but now I'm here, so thank you guys for 200 subscribers. So, for the past days, I have been thinking and thinking and wondering, hmm, what could I make a video about? But I didn't really fe find anything interesting, so I just decided to make a little video about Slaughter. This is being played in the ancient bracket, so um, yeah, most of these players are ancient, he's even a divine one. So this is not particularly high level play, as you can see here, this bounty hunter being crazy. Of course my tinkers immediately lets him know that he is indeed a retard, apparently. What can we look at in this game? First of all, I want to talk about my pick. I would never pick Slarder into any type of team. I personally think Slaughter is an excellent offlaner if you put him on a rather uncontested offlane. While Slaughter doesn't have any specific lane control abilities, he is still a very very strong hero which allows you to basically kind of control your lane with normal lane controlling techniques. And you'll see me here go for exactly that. I don't see any of their supports. I have a ward here of course so I would see them if they were here but right now I don't even know where the supports are so I'm doing this thinking that the lane is not very safe trying to get every CS wow I'm so proud of myself um, allows me to control the lane even though I'm not actually a lane controlling type of hero but I can just use general lane controlling techniques to control my lane now something else I think I was the fourth person to pick Slaughter here. Uh, and I basically pick Slaughter into Bounty Hunter and Doom and the Arc Warden. So why why is Slaughter good? Why did I even pick him? Well, first of all, if, of course, I have my ultimate for the Bounty Hunter. Which is going to make it very easy uh, later in the game to kill the bounty and not allow him to control our team. So I picked Slaughter at a time when I didn't yet know that uh, I was going to be up against Jugger. So Jugger was my only real worry this game because we have Tinker and Radiant has no real way to close in on that Tinker. So I'm expecting, okay, probably the Tinker is going to be able to do a lot of damage. What I'm thinking all the time here is, hmm, my, my real worry this game is just the Juggernaut. And let's see what I come up with here to control him later. So right now I'm waiting for my level 6 because level 6 is the point where I can actually really... Uh, harass the juggernaut also notice that this was very crucial see how i'm stunning him exactly when his spin is over because if i don't do that i'm gonna get ulted and that's why i die and now he can't ult me again because the creeps are next to him and if he ults me he's gonna jump on the creeps you see jugger is still doing good in terms of last it's the nice but then again uh, i'm doing pretty well for a lane where my team is not really trying to help me so here I'm TPing to the top lane because I see we're being dived. However, Jar was losing very, very little HP, so I know that we can really win this fight easily. And this comes down just to being, to just Slarder being a super strong hero. Unfortunately, he died here with a Zeus ultimate, but I mean, that's to be expected. Um, extremely crucial as a Slarder player to help your team out. Slarder is a good hero because he can fight early in the game. So what does that mean for us? We want to support our teammate by being strong whenever we can. Slaughter has very little uh, solo potential. The only time you're gonna get a solo kill is if a very, very squishy enemy support player is like drastically out of position. In any other situation, you're not good at creating solo kills. However, you're an extremely good team fighter type of uh, initiator. So here you can see I'm focusing on a lane that I want to be doing good. So I keep going top. As a result, I am kind of disregarding my bottom lane. But right now the plan is, since Jugger is my only really, the only hero I'm worried about, what I can do is I can try to isolate Juggernaut by controlling the rest of his team. And that's not exactly what I'm doing here, you see, I am creating kills around the top lane, killing their supports, killing even their middle core, which is an extremely good kill obviously. 
And Jogger is alone in farming, he's top, top net worth I assume, yes. But he's the only hero that can do something for Radiant right now. What am I doing? I'm just kind of watching my team and trying to be helpful. Here I didn't help him because I simply wasn't, I mean, I wasn't there, you know? I didn't have mana. If I went there, then I couldn't, have even, couldn't even have stunned. But, you know, sometimes it just doesn't work. And instead of running in and just dying, it's better to just get farmed. And as you will see soon now, thanks to the fact that I was farming and securing my blink dagger when I needed it, I can help out my gyrocopter here who was being doomed. And I'm pretty sure he would have died here without me. Um, well, since Doom is a pretty good hero, he has Headrisk and of course the region from his Scorched Earth. We don't get the kill here, but I save my gyro and kind of create some space for him. So anyways, let's talk a little while about my items on Slaughter. I'm a big, big fan of power trades on Slaughter. Slaughter really, really, really needs some attack speed. His attack speed is very low. And you also have Bash, so power trades just for the attack speed is already very useful. But power trades also of course give you health and the option to tread switch. Some people like getting tranquil boots on Slaughter, but I don't like that. I think just power trades are too good to not be gotten on Slaughter. At the same time I also want my blink dagger as soon as possible. So when I notice in my game that it's going pretty well and I don't anticipate dying soon or you know really having to defend ourselves then I will get the Blink Dagger before the Power Treads, but after Blink Dagger, Power Treads are still the best item I think that you can get. You remember the change that they did, which is when you have level 4 Guardian Sprint, you get 700 movement speed while you're in the river. And I think 700 movement speed is the fastest speed that a hero can be in Dota, due to the fact that I know I'm gonna be extremely fast in this river, uh, he makes a good move here, which kind of doesn't allow me to kill him soon. But since I'm so fast, I can go back in. I am no fear of getting caught by these two guys right here. You see this? And... Alright, see you guys, I'm gone. Fighting around the, the river area is a... I mean, it's just a way to not lose. I don't know how you how you lose fights in the river area if you're Slaughter. So take a look here at how good of a farmer Slaughter really is, only having power threats. Your ultimate is an extremely low mana ability, so using it on creeps is recommended. Slaughter is just a very good hero. He has very high st uh, strength gain. 3 strength gain per level is certainly one of the highest strength gains in the game, I think. Here's an extremely, extremely important thing. Slithering Crush is physical damage. Your ultimate, Corrosive Haste, reduces armor. So if you... Bash! Yes! Nice! You see, I immediately got the bash there. Um, but anyway, if you first apply your ulti to the enemy, then you Slithering Crush, you will do basically twice as much damage. Because the armor reduction is so much. So let's take a look at the state of the game here. Uh, Dire, we are of course ahead in gold, about 3000 gold lead here, which is not a lot. Jugger is the only hero I am worried about in this game. All our other cores are ahead of the rest of uh, Radiant's team. And like I predicted earlier, Jugger is the only hero that I'm gonna be worried about soon. So I think I came up with a pretty cool solution to this in this game, which is buying Heaven's Halberd. You see? Heaven, ha Heaven's Halberd is really the dream kind of item in this game. For many reasons. First of all, if I manage to apply Heaven's Halberd to Juggernaut before he uses his ultimate, that will drastically reduce the damage from uh, Omni Slash because as you guys know, Juggernaut is actually able to attack during his Omni Slash. So if he is disarmed, the only damage that will come from his ulti is actually the, the damage from the ulti itself and there will not be no attacks and the attacks are the majority of the damage of uh, Omnislash, not many people know that. And you know what's great? We're gonna be able to see this in action because look at this, I get Heaven's Halberd, 
immediately use it and there we go Jogger uses Omni Slash and no damage did you see that and here I'm even baiting him here a little bit because first of all um because I've I have blink <laughs> and I have my teammates to help me out so see how easy this is easy little bait in, bait the juggernaut in our team yes I die for it but that literally doesn't matter trading the position one for the position three is always good so with heaven's halberd we like kind of solved our problem which was the jogger because now we have five seconds where the jogger is useless in any team fight here a little bit of miscommunication happened i mean this kind of thing happens in voice chat i'm telling them okay guys let's go jogger you know and as i in my head i'm seeing okay just they just walk and they're going to be there when i'm attacking what happens though is they actually turn around the exact time that i was going to go as a result i'm just out of position and die and in this case all you can do is Go to voice chat and tell your team, okay, sorry guys, little little bit of a hiccup here. It's no problem. You you dying once in the grand scheme of things doesn't matter at all. But look, look at what happened then. My whole death was basically just a bait. I all I planned this all from the start. Because I knew that Juggernaut would think, oh, okay, I'm so strong now. I can go then. Using his ultimate on the gyro who has Aegis. You know, these are all things that I planned out before of this, of course. Yeah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Something to think about with Slardar. Slardar is a low cooldown hero. All of his abilities have low cooldown, his ult and his Slytherin crush being his only abilities, of course. So as a result, what you really want as Slardar is you just want to be alive as long as possible. This means that you're, you're really free in your item choices. You can really get whatever you feel is going to be good in the game. I would say the only core items for Slaughter are Power Treads, Orb of Venom and Blink Dagger. Just because these three items, you really, you don't get around them because they're just so good. There's nothing wrong with them at all, so that's what I would call the core. But other than that, I think you're completely 100% free to buy whatever you want. After either Drums or Urn, you gotta think what you need. What happens in the majority of slug, uh, Slardar games, I think, is that you will get focused down rather quickly in any engage. In that case, you usually want to buy the force staff because in, then you can blink in, stun, force back out and stay relevant. In this particular game, I didn't feel very challenged when I went to initiate. So rather I took something that helps me fight because I know I can man up against a juggernaut if I have Heaven's Halberd. So what happened here? We did a pretty nice smoke. Rubik finds Juggernaut, gets the leaf, we stun him. However, with the spin, of course, he can get out and since Jar was a little bit far away. However, this creates a imbalance in Radiant's team because now Zeus is in the front when he, of course, usually wants to be in the back. Here, of course, fighting into the, what is it called, Magne magnetic field, not very smart, but our Tinker is still alive and well. And looking again at what I did during this fight as the slaughter, you see that I, I was actually busy disengaging. Since I'm so low here, and I think that's the right decision, since I'm so low here, I don't just want to die. This is the problem any initiator has, is they initiate and die. So rather I am focused on trying to stay alive, dealing my damage over time that I have since I have low cooldowns. So now I um, tank the Doom ultimate and this kind of ends the fight. So my next item now is the Lotus Orb. I'm a big fan of Lotus Orb, I think it's a fun item to use. Just plop it on and you're like, stop killing yourself, you know? Uh, Blade Mail was certainly also an option. but. The problem with blade mail in this game, I think, is that they don't really burst a lot, so blade mail's damage potential is not very high. And Lotus Orb, of course, has a lot of targets. We have a bunch of guaranteed hits when we're fighting against Zeus, and we have a bunch of very, very big hits if we are able to reflect Doom or reflect Juggernaut ulti, or even the track would be pretty good. So overall, Lotus Orb is just a beautiful fit in this game. So yeah, here we go. We're taking it kind of chill. 
with corrosive haze taking wash is of course pretty fast. Just watch me in this fight zipping in, zipping out. Here I'm even winning against the Juggernaut who got a few unlucky bounces. And as the game progresses towards the end and we're making pushes for the Rex, uh, I got cheese from Roshan. But you know, in the, at the end of the day, we simply end the game. Anyway, thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you guys again for 200 subscribers. It's a big accomplishment for me. I've got a little video in the works. It's going to be about the offlane, so definitely keep your eyes out for that. I would sure appreciate if you guys click the like button a little bit more, you know. Uh, we're getting very few likes here. I'm just kidding guys, I love you all. See you next time.